What are your thoughts about my new haircut? If you like it, hit the thumbs up. If you don't like it, still hit the thumbs up. Anyway, what I really want to do for today's video is to celebrate yung 1,000 subs milestone ko. So to formally celebrate it, I want to share sa inyo one personal story dun sa list of my life principles. I write these principles when I pick up something that I would really love to be part of my life. A philosophy that I would really practice. And for today's video, let's talk about the story of moral compass. This lesson, this story is something dear to me because this is the only one that stands out among the lectures that I attended from elementary to college. Just imagine, 16 years worth of lecture class, lahat nakalimutan ko na except for this one. I wasn't supposed to hear this story kasi hindi naman ako enrolled in sa lecture or sa class where I learned it from. And looking back, it's really funny how luck came into place this story na to. It was a right time, right episode moment of my life. Let's go back to memory lane for you to fully grasp the story. There are some comments where I received that they thought I studied accounting in college because I'm making personal family finance content on YouTube, but nope, I did took up electronics engineering in college. Connecting the story, this lecture or class happened in Mapua where I studied in college. And sa Mapua, when you take up ECE, somewhere in your third year or fourth year, you have to pick a specialization. There's comms for Telco, Micro for Semicon, Network for Cisco, Automation, Robotics, and Power Electronics. Okay, I took up comms as my specialization kasi siya yung pinakamadaling ipasa at the time. But the lecture I'm mentioning, it was under a different specialization, it was under a different track that was under microelectronics. So to begin with, wala naman talaga ang business of hearing this lecture kasi hindi naman ako enrolled into that class. But I was bored at that time, wala akong matambayan, so I sit in sa micro class since madami naman ako mga tropa doon. Then si Sir Pagli came into the class, siya yung prop nila doon, si Dr. Paglinawan. So ito na yung lecture na sinasabi ko, I hope you're still here in this point of the video kasi ito yung pinaka-important part ng video na to. He start preaching about exit exams on how rampant and karapan na yung mga student magkopyahan sa exit exam. For non-mapuan subscribers to give you context muna what is an exit exam, so ito lang naman yung compilation ng lahat ng pinag-aralan mo under one specific subject category. For example, mathematics exit exam. So lahat ng pinag-aralan mo sa ano, mathematics, lahat yun, you'll take it into one exam. So yun yung exit exam. And uh, kaya desperado yung mga student to pass this kasi mahirap talaga siyang ipasa and it's a prerequisite to another subject. So sobrang desperado talaga pumasa yung mga students when it comes to exit exams. This sentence will summarize the whole story of this video. I might be paraphrasing yung sinabi ni Sir Pagli at that time, but it will be the same context. So ganito yung sinabi niya at that time. Sabi niya, tanggap niya naman daw talaga if magkakopyahan niya yung mga sadyante because it's part of the culture na, but, but, huwag naman daw sana maging karapal. And you have to always be mindful and be parang conscientious na if you're doing something wrong, if you're doing something against your will, or if you're doing something against your morals, you have to be mindful na you're treating your conscience against it. So, let me expound. When you're young, your conscience, your moral, it's pure. 10 times out of 10, malamang sa malamang gagawin mo yung tama. It's like the north direction of a compass. It's always pointing north. Or in analogy, your morals, your conscience, it will always tell you to do what is right. But sometimes as we grow older, we are put into situations where we have to go against our will or we have to do something wrong. And I think it's normal. Minsan talaga hindi siya may iwasan. But you have to be very careful and very mindful because it will poison your morals. I think yung analogy na ginamit ni Sir at that time was like a rubber band. If you stretch it once, malamang sa malamang babalik pa yan to its normal size. Pero pag ni-stretch mo yun ang paulit-ulit, there will be a chance na hindi na yan bumalik to its normal size. It's the same with your conscience and your morals. Pag gumawa ka ng bagay ng mali, ng paulit-ulit, yung mali mo nagiging tama na sa pananaw mo. If you try beating the red light once and hindi ka nahuli, you'll probably think about it pa na, oh, swerte, or oh, shit, hindi ko na siya gagawin ulit. But once you do it several times and hindi ka nahuli, your guilt will be gone. The same with corrupt people, once they did it several times, taking somebody else's money will become normal na para sa kanila. Uh, for the people who cheat on their partner, I've seen this several times. Yung unang pag-cheat nila, probably may konsensya pa sila. They really parang feel guilt or nagsisis sila when they've done it. But when they did it the second time and yung mga succeeding time, yung pagkakahuli sa kanila yung sa mga succeeding time na yun, kaplastika na lang yung ginagawa nila. I guess by the examples na sinabi ko, you already got the point. Look, doing something wrong once, that's fine, that's forgivable. Ako mismo sa sarili ko, I do a lot of mistake once and I genuinely believe in second chances. But more than that, I think you should already consider yung concept ng moral compass that the other person's moral compass is already broken. That something morally wrong for you ain't morally wrong for the other person anymore. Let me share two personal stories that I felt really guilty about. I don't wanna act like a perfect person na wala ang binagong mali. So, here it is. Back when I was selling insurance, there's this one time, just only one time that 
Uh, I did sell an insurance to my friend using emotional selling. I'm one client away from hitting the bonus and I did hit the bonus. I was able to close my friend but I was never proud of that achievement. I got the price but it doesn't feel right for me at that time and I felt really dirty to myself noong mga panahon yun and I promised to myself na that would be the first and last time that I would do emotional selling and sure enough, that was the first and last time that I did it. Whenever I felt guilty about doing something, I always look back at this principle and remind myself that if I do it again, there will be a chance that my, my moral compass will be broken. And it really helps me na to avoid making the same mistakes ng pa ulit ulit. The next story was when I lent money to a friend, of course with interest. But alam ko naman na hindi niya gagamitin yung money wisely. Uh, he will just use it to please other people. Pero alam ko makakabayan siya. As someone who advocates personal finance, it's hypocritical on my side when I did it. The idea is to empower people about money, but I'm doing the opposite at that time. It's a loan sharky thing on my part and I regret it. But the second time around when he borrows money, uh, I was able to do the right thing and I rejected the offer. Another tip, try not to put yourself into tempting situations where you will do the wrong thing. I think that alone will highly, highly, highly help you avoid committing the same mistakes. So those are the times that I did a mistake, learned my lesson, and never did it again. I hope you appreciate the honesty. I hope you don't quickly judge that I'm a bad person. And I hope you learned something very valuable from this story. I also hope that you get the point of protecting your own moral compass because it helps you keep doing the right things. Plus, it just makes you a kinder person. That's it. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you love this video. Subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. And yeah, see you in the next video. Bye!